Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. And in this video, we're going to talk about fine grained reactivity in SolidJS. So before we kind of take a look at the code and contrast it with React, I just wanted to talk about SolidJS for a couple of minutes and then we can take a look at the code. So SolidJS is a front end framework to build websites. So it takes a lot of inspiration from React. As you can see, it has functional components. It also has hooks like create signal, create memo, and create effect, uh, which sound very similar to use state and use effect and use memo hooks. But the two main differentiating factors is that solid doesn't use a virtual DOM and solid has this concept of fine grained reactivity that we will talk about in this video. So before we take a look at the code, I also wanted to show you why solid JS is a big deal. So if I go over to the state of JS 2022 survey, so solid is pretty much at the top of the chart when it comes to retention, which basically means that people would use this again. 2021, it was at 90% and in 2022, it has increased to 91%. But when it comes to awareness, it's at 66%. So definitely there is a lot more the community can do to increase the awareness about solid JS. And that's what my intention is with this video. So now let's move on to the code and let's talk about what does fine grained reactivity mean in solid JS. So there are basically two concepts which are pretty much important in solid JS. One is the tracking scope and the other is the fine grained reactivity. They kind of are connected to each other. Today we'll talk about fine grained reactivity. I'll, I'll show you a small demo of what I have prepared for you guys so that it kind of makes more sense. So, um, and I'm gonna contrast this with React because React is what gets compared with solid and uh, is pretty much the most popular framework right now to build websites. So let's talk about React first. So the code is pretty simple. I have a simple component which has two states two state variables, a counter and a title, and then a date dot now and a expression in a div, which is which basically prints the current timestamp and an input, which basically sets the title whenever the user presses something in the input. Uh, similarly, when I click on the button, uh, the counter here increases. Now what I want you to observe is this particular thing, the timestamp. So whenever I click on this button, observe that the date dot now also changes, right? So meaning this also get, gets re-rendered and that kind of makes sense, right? And also if I type into this text box, you can see that the timestamp here also changes, right? So if I remove from here, this also changes. And this is basically how React works. Now, if I want to explain it more conceptually, I'll take an example and, and explain it using Xkyle Draw. So here is basically your DOM, right? In case of uh, React, this is your VDOM. So suppose these are your component tree, and if this component, the state in this component changes, it is marked as dirty, and the child components are then also re-rendered, and also the component itself gets re-rendered. Uh, so this is basically how React re-rendering works at a very high level, and it's pretty simple to understand. Whenever you set state in any of the state variables, it detects that there it detects that the component is dirty because the state has changed, and it will just re-render the component, right? And when it comes to re-rendering the component, it's gonna re-render everything that is inside of the component. So even if the title changes, it's gonna re-render the date. Similarly, when the counter changes, it's gonna re-render the title as well as it's gonna re-render the date. So, so there are provisions in React to avoid rendering of non-related fields using memo. So I can extract this into a component and, and just put it inside a use memo hook and then see if the value is changed and then only re-render it. So that's one way of doing it. So that is left upon the dev to make that change. Uh, so yeah, so that's how uh, React's reactivity works. Now let's take a look at SolidJS, right? How does Solid differ in, in this use case, in the similar use case? So in Solid, you can see a couple of changes that I've made. One major change is that instead of using use state, I use create signal method. So the create signal method is exported by SolidJS and is pretty much the backbone of reactivity when it comes to SolidJS. And I export two signals, the counter signal and the text signal. 
and the app component uses these two signals. Now observe what happens when I click on this button and when I type into this text box. The functionality should be the same as we saw in the React example, right? So if I click on this, my counter changes from this, but as you can see, my date dot now, my timestamp doesn't re-render. Similarly, if I type some text in here, my timestamp doesn't re-render, neither does my counter re-render, right? If I keep on clicking on this, this won't re-render. And this is what is meant by fine-grained reactivity. So the way this works is that the component tree is basically a one-to-one -one mapping to DOM nodes. So each of these divs that I've written in this actually represent an actual DOM node. So whenever Solid detects a change in a signal, for example, when I click on this, what happens is I'm setting the counter to counter plus one, right? So I'm changing the signal here. So as soon as Solid detects that there is a change in the signal, it looks for the DOM node, which is dependent on the signal, which is this DOM node. It traverses the DOM and just updates the value, right? So there is no VDOM or nothing here. It just actually traverses the DOM and just updates its value, right? And that's why you don't see any updates made to date.now and neither do you see updates made to any of the other DOM nodes. So it actually goes to the DOM node and patches the DOM. Whereas in React, what happens is it actually looks at the component in the, in the VDOM, updates the component depending upon the state change and then using the reconciliation algorithm, it's just going to patch the DOM. This is more of a component level reactivity this is a DOM node level reactivity, right? There is one more thing that I wanted to talk about when it comes to components. So if you look at React, so if I add a console.log statement in here, so if I say console, or if I just add it in JSX, uh, just to be, um, I can just say console.log rendered. R -E -N -T -R -E -T. And then I can add the same thing in SolidJS and it'll make, it'll make it much more clear. Now let's take a look at what happens in React, right? So let me clear the console and let me click on this. So as you can see, this thing is getting rendered, right? Whenever I click on it, the whole component is getting rendered, right? But now in here, if I clear the console and if I click on it, this is actually going in each of these DOM nodes and updating it, right? So this doesn't get, this JSX expression doesn't get called every time you click on the click button. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button. There are a couple of new videos in the pipeline, which I'm going to publish really soon. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.